Okay, we should be live now. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. It's 4.30 on March 3rd, 2021, and this is the Public Works Committee of the City of Isle of Palms going to call the meeting to order. Acknowledge that the press and the public have been duly notified of the meeting in, accord in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, next on the agenda is approval of the previous meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion, deletions, additions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, next item on the agenda is citizens' comments. Do we have any citizens' comments today, Ron? We did not have any citizens' comments through the online form, and no one signed up to speak either. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, department reports. Director Pitts. All right. <clears throat> so for the month of February, uh, garbage collection was ex about what I expected. Uh, also, the yard debris collections was right on target of what I expected. Uh, the miscellaneous debris, however, was uh, on the high side at 50 tons. Um, the big thing for me, for you guys, are, is the vehicle maintenance. You can see Murphy showed his head this month, past month. My two big uh, hits were the uh, PW24, 21, and let's see. 26 and 22. 22 is the old, one of the older ones on the fleet, and it, we just needed some major PM and uh, some things done to it. So it was a $6,000 hit, and the $4,000 was PW26 was just a, was just a, a cable that had to be replaced. We didn't have a choice. Um, so we, uh, but I think we're still well within budget. Uh, I think we'll come in. The three months, left, roughly three months left, unless we have some major pro issue, I think we still should be well within our budget. Um, other than that, if there's any questions you may have for me, otherwise we'll turn it over to Robert for his report. Hey, hey Donnie, what uh, what do you think caused the miscellaneous debris to be on the high side? Was it just just or No, mm -hmm. normally in the. Uh, if you have some good weather, uh, you'll get it, uh, especially uh, March and April will be even higher. Uh, but also because of the uh, folks still at home, that has something to do with it. Yeah, clearing things out. Yeah, yeah spring springtime, everybody happens every year. You can always anticipate high miscellaneous in the spring and in the fall. Hey, Thank you. I have just a quick um, thing that came to mind, uh, Donnie, there's a recycling, a blue recycling bin kind of on 23rd Avenue in the dune field. This looks like it was tossed over and kind of, I, probably by, you know, somebody who shouldn't have been doing that. Um, if you could pass that along. All right, we'll get it. Thank you. Okay, Robert. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start with drainage. Um, we had EDU services, our contractor back on the island. They did two locations on 29th Avenue as far as uh, ditch cleaning. Um, we also had them back out to the gravel municipal lot behind the public safety building because we've had a problem with flooding back there. They've cleaned out that whole drop inlet and that is functioning and we're just waiting to do a concrete pad around those so we don't have all that gravel um, going in those inlets and clogging them up. Um, we have Charleston County scheduled for 25th Avenue to fix some separated pipes. Um, they're four foot sections of pipes and this isn't the first time it's happened there. We've had two separations prior and they have to come back for another two. Um, we also have Driftwood Lane where we had a whole section of pipe separate with a flap valve that had um, not been functioning. The separation was at a high tide cycle was flowing back to Driftwood Lane. But since then we've, that is complete. And actually the flat valve has been installed. Um, we didn't have a real high tide today, but um, 
it wasn't backing up at all into the storm drain. We also completed the marina parking lot drainage. Um, that is also complete. That's right outside of the fuel island. And what we did there was we also put a drainage filter on it just in case any um, excess spilling of gas or oils coming off of any boats. Um, that drainage filter will collect um, in there before it actually will make it into the next uh, inlet and then obviously out into the water. Um, as far as facilities, we finally got around to finishing the exterior painting of the public works building. Um, we've completed the repair on the public safety building, white fencing around a public safety building that was missing. Uh, we've also gone and put all the parking stops back in both um, public safety building, parking lot, where the trailers used to be. And then we also replaced all the parking stops that were broken in the large municipal lot. Uh, we had a repair of a backflow preventer and water line at the tidal wave dock. Um, as far as Front Beach, we completed a lot of projects there. We've got the new patio that just went in front of the restrooms, the permeable patio. All the aprons on Ocean Boulevard, the brick paper aprons have been repaired that were sinking. Um, we also have all the new picnic tables built and ready to be installed up at the patio. Comcast has replaced the broken utility boxes that were in the sidewalk up at Front Beach, and those are complete. Um, we've removed the old Front Beach street lights that were there in conjunction with the new um, street lights. Um, so those have been removed. And what we did is we have the electrical connection still in the ground, buried in a box. So um, if we need to get back to some of the use that electrical, it's still in the ground there. Um, and then also right here at the connector, we have um, all those city owned street lights have been painted. They've been upgraded with LED lighting on them. Um, we've done some beach access pruning, 40th Ave to be specific, heavy pruning. And then we've also taken some of the ROC that we've had in the municipal parking lot that came from the public safety building renovation, <clears throat> that on forest trail to fill in a, um, a big, uh, I guess, rut or gully on the side of a road there that cars were going into. And outside of that, that's just some highlights. If you have any questions. Robert, public works, public works on building looks good. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Uh, I saw I saw them out there painting that. Uh, I guess it was last week when they were yeah. doing that. It really it really looks uh, much better now. So I've got yeah, one other question too, Go ahead. Robert. Uh, in regards to cleanup of debris on the connector, uh, uh, you know, by public works and also the sweeping contractor. Do we do the entire connector from one end to the other or do we just do a portion of it? No, we do the connector. So I'll send, when we have the manpower, um, I will send a truck up in the shoulder and they physically go up there and we'll pick up debris um, up to a certain size, obviously. They're not grabbing pieces of mulch and stone, but mm -hmm. anything large cans, bottles, yeah, from one end of the connector to the other, um, you know, and then, well, anything that's big, um, bags that blow out of the back or any big piece of plastic, we have that, we'll do that on a regular basis, whether a phone call or if Donnie or I'm driving in and notice it, you know, Joe Washington will go out, pick that up also. Okay. Do our neighbors participate in any of the cleaning that you know of? Not that I know of. Only the state. Yes. Only the state. Yes. And they do the monthly maintenance on it, right? Yes. Once a month. Yes. And is, oh, I'm sorry, Rusty. Go ahead. No, right. go, go ahead, Susan. I was just wondering, too, or wanted to suggest that maybe we should um, try to document how much we collect, if, if only from uh, taking a picture. If it is it that much that a picture would help show the volume yeah. that we collect each time? Yes, early on I went, I would physically do it um, on the connector and I do have pictures of the back of my truck and the debris that was collected on it. When, okay. I, when I 
when I send the guys up, they have not, but I do have, like I said, from early on, which was last summer. So okay. just, yeah. just, I think just to be good. clear, is it, is it, is it, I'm sorry, Susan, I didn't mean to. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say that I think that would be good for um, just to keep that record should we need it or to to help show other people what the problem is that we're contending with sure. and the you know amount of effort that's involved in, in collecting all right. of that. <clears throat> that's all I had. Okay. And, and just 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 to be clear for for you know for my self edification, I guess, Robert. Are we doing the? Are we doing day to day pickup of small debris of a connector, or is it just as needed? How, how do we normally go about that? Most of the time, it turned out to be it would turn out to be once a week. Um, oh. Obviously, time constraints are what you know make it difficult to get up there and dedicate. You know, you have to have somebody driving the truck and at least one or two people walking because it is a little you know, dangerous to have, you know, they put the strobe lights and all of that. So it was when we get busier, I was trying to get them up there once a week, um, but it varies. Mm -hmm. It all depends on uh, what fault flies out. If you got landscapers leaving the island and you mm -hmm. see big buckets or I get a phone call from a PD or somebody and it'll pick up more in the summer. In the summer, you'll have several departments picking stuff up off of that connector. So I would say it would be rather difficult to capture every time that public works or PD mm -hmm. uh, fire department uh, pick something up off the, off the connector. Okay. Th certainly we can do it prior to the seasons, but when mm -hmm. we're busy, it's going to be difficult to actually, um, uh, be, be efficient as well as well as because we're, we're trying to steal time to get up there to get it clean right because they got other job okay. duties so it'll be right it, right and hopefully hopefully the restriping will present some sort of compromise on safety with this but we all know that there is a lot of debris at certain times mm -hmm. building debris and that sort of thing mm -hmm. that ends up out there on the side of the connector or in the middle of the connector we've all seen it i've stopped a couple of times and pulled it over to the side myself or put it in the car in the car if I could if it was small enough. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Anything else on department report? Yeah, a quick follow up. Robert, isn't the contractor, don't they do more of a mechanical sweeping as well? Or is it, am I remembering that right? Yeah. We do have a, an actual street sweeper that comes in and cleans the connector and also goes down to the commercial district, front beach. Um, and breach inlet is also on that the bridge there. Um, yeah, so we do have an actual street sweeper that does clean. And they they would pick up sizable debris at the same time. I mean, yes, I've had okay. that conversation with them. Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? There being none, we're we'll gonna move on to old business item A update on phase three drainage project. Small internal projects in Waterway Boulevard path elevation. Who wants to take that? Oh, yes. Um, Douglas will be providing this month's update. Chair. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, okay thank you. Um, so on the phase three project, that's the uh, big outfall project. As you will, will recall, Thomas and Hutton has suggested that we break that project into five different uh, environmental permits. It's actually five permits to two different agencies, so it's a total of ten permits. Uh, we have we have submit now applied for four of those, four of the five, um, and we expect to apply for the fifth soon. Um, so that's going along well. Uh, they have indicated that everything that they're getting back is is positive and they're they're working well together with the Corps of Engineers and uh, OCRM on that. Um, kind of internally, really on the on the city side of things, we are continuing to try to work with the wild dunes um, owners on the need for a our easements that cross the golf course to be realigned. We have easements there, but 
but we have meandered outside of those easements with our uh, drainage and we need more of an easement. So we're continuing to work with them. They have been, um, they're kind of finishing up. They're, they're in a last minute push on the hotel. So they've been uh, very busy and, um, but we expect that we should be able to successfully work through that with the Wild Dune staff here in the coming weeks or months. Uh, we, we have received a kind of tentative schedule um, well, we've, several schedules, but most recently, um, the schedule that has been provided had the construction beginning on um, the Forest Trails outfall and the 30th Avenue outfall roughly in September 2021 um, and going through approximately nine months to stop for the summer months. And, and so they're scheduling that to hopefully go through the fall uh, in the winter, and then we would take a pause for the summer months of 2022, and then start back on um, the last outfall, which will be 41st Avenue um, in September of 2022, and then that project will last about six months, uh, and then and then we would be wrapped up um, early 2023. So that's kind of it for where we are on that project and be happy to answer any questions if you all have any. If, if I don't hear any, I'll move on to the- I, I have, I have some questions. What are, were you gonna be talking more about the waterway boulevard path elevation? Yeah, yep. okay. so we'll, I'll just take them in order as they are on the agenda. Okay, gotcha, um, sure, go ahead. Small internal projects. That work you'll see is underway. Uh, Gulfstream is is um, working in the there are three kind of smaller projects there on 41st Avenue. They are um, they're they're here and they're doing that work. I know they had a complication with a with an oak tree right there, and I, I think Robert met out there with them. I don't I think they're other than that I haven't heard of any uh, glitches, so I think we're smooth sailing on that. Uh, and if there are no no questions on that one. I'll move on to the Waterway Boulevard uh, path. And, and we do actually just, I think it was yesterday or the day before, we, we received kind of the um, final product from Thomas and Hutton on that. And it included um, cost estimates. And, and I will say it was a little more than I think we thought it was going to cost. Um, and there's still a little bit of information to figure out Kind of what the what costs we already were going to incur versus the total project. Um, there, the cost estimate they gave us was six hundred and fifteen thousand. We think that two or three, I'm, uh, two or three hundred thousand were just on repaving the path, anyway. So we think we're going to have that work, kind of anyway. But there are some there are some expenses it didn't include. It did not include uh, engineering. There's a little bit of a contingency in there. Um, so we're kind of um, kind of detailing out what those numbers mean to us. Uh, and I think that in conjunction with that, um, and we, we, Desiree and Thomas and Hutton and I all met this morning to just talk about big picture where we are. Uh, and I think kind of in a, in a nutshell, we don't know exactly where how much money the city is going to have uh, left from the money that we've borrowed. Um, and we also don't know how this project will kind of stack up against the project. So we'll, we'll be reporting back in more detail on that when we get a little bit more information to be able to kind of answer those questions. But, but we do have, uh, I would say that they pretty much have, have finished that project and we're just waiting uh, really for just a final presentation to you all at, at some level. You said that uh, the cost was coming in an estimate about 650. What were you expecting? 615, 615. Um, I think we thought it was more in the neighborhood of uh, two. I had it in my mind around 250,000 over and above the roughly 200,000 that we had. So I, I would say that 
you know, and it's very much pulled from the sky. So don't rely on what, you know, what we were thinking. Well, not until we get the final numbers, but that's, that's substantially higher. Yeah. It, when you, when you conceptually, when you kind of think of that path work, it really is simple. It's, you know, it's adding some rock and then repaving on that. Where it gets complicated is getting the water through the berm and off of and into the drainage system. So it just requires additional drainage work. I will say that the drainage work that they're talking about adding is, is in locations that are badly flooding currently. So um, approximately 4,000 uh, waterway, that part of the road is already very low and there's no infrastructure there. So they, they are calling for new uh, pipes and uh, a system to get that water off the road and through the berm could be argued that we kind of need that anyway. There's also an additional place that needs work uh, closer to kind of 30, I want to say it's 3,100 block of waterway, but it's another area that sig holds significant water in Waterway Boulevard that we probably could use infrastructure anyway. And this project has that infrastructure in it. So it's bumping those prices. <coughs> uh, Mr. Okay. Chair? Yes. So I'm trying to remember, Douglas, if you can remind when it was that Thomas and Hutton did that great presentation. Was it within this calendar year that they uh, talked about all the benefits that we could potentially see from raising the waterway boulevard path in terms of protecting homes from drainage, uh, you know, flooding? Um, I am the worst with time. I, I think in my mind that was maybe three or four months ago. I could be, I think it was at the, but yeah, I it was in November. It was no, okay. November of 2020 um, where, you know, we, we had a, a very long conversation with them about not only the outfall project, but also looking at mm -hmm. some of the um, analysis that they had, um, that they had conducted over, um, you know, level of flooding and level of protection that that, that, that path. Yeah. It was and back that, in November. That, that was just kept with the committee and not with the full council, right? Correct? Because that was Correct. a really impressive presentation that I think the full council could benefit from in terms of um, looking in the bigger picture at how much protection we could gain for, for homes um, from flooding and how valuable that might be, even though we're potentially looking at spending an extra less than $200,000 when Douglas kind of guesstimated before. Um, anyways, I just, there, there seemed to be great value, protective value in elevating the path. And also I would imagine, and Douglas, if you could weigh in, that if we elevate the path, then we are looking at less um, problems down the line with having to repave faster, like the, the path will last in itself will last longer, correct? The, the main problem is tree roots. So yeah. I would hope that- I think that the path, even without elevation, I think the path could be constructed in a way that it shouldn't have problems as quickly as it did. You know, I think if they were to excavate out the roots and compact it a little better, I think you could get a good long life out of the path, even if you didn't do that project. Okay. Yeah. The yeah should, point, shouldn't we work through the numbers and see what our options are before we do anything further? I mean, instead of yeah, moving it or anything. Yeah, you're right, Rusty. We're a long way off. We, we, yeah. we don't, we've got to get the numbers and see how it would fit within the budget. That's number one. And we don't have that yet. So we look forward to hearing from you further on this project, Douglas. Anything else on that? Oh, one more quick question. Um, we talked last at last month about the potential for doing better lighting. Uh, well, actually the past couple of meetings, we've talked about what how we could better light that path and whether as we talk about making these big changes if it, if it would be smart to look at the possibilities at the same time. Douglas, did you happen to get more information from Thomas and Hutton about what might I have be I have not. I haven't been able to. Um, I, I think that they, when 
when that was sent to them, I think that they were kind of past the conceptual design and into the into the number crunching of the um, coming up with a cost. Mm -hmm. but, but we can, you know, if, if it's not done as part of the path, we can talk about options. I, I think that kind of kicks it into another, you know, mm -hmm. kind of out of the stormwater department of Thomas and Hutton and into the, I don't mm -hmm. even know that they have electrical uh, component within there. Okay. Yeah, maybe just something to um, consider later then. Okay. Okay. Um, on to item B, discussion of Dominion Energy Non-Standard Service Fund in consideration of eligible projects. If you remember, we had like four projects that we were looking at and we gave a report to city council that uh, at least I told them that um, hopefully we'd make, a, make some progress today and come up with with um, priorities one and two at least in order to kick this back to council to get something moving this year. So, uh, Desiree, if you wouldn't remind, if you wouldn't mind reminding us of the four projects that we thought that we were considering, and then let the com committee uh, consider which ones they think are priorities, and so we can. Uh, my goal is to recommend something to council out of this meeting. Um, sure. In your packets, you have the documents that were presented by the, the Dominion Energy team, which highlights five different projects that um, they've already sort of talked through with the committee at their um, earlier this year when they when they presented, um, they attended the public works meeting. Um, those projects are located at the City Marina, 41st Avenue, 21st, 14th Avenue, and then uh, Palm, Bo Palm Boulevard and Oak Harbor around 11th and 13th Avenue. Um, they're all associated with undergrounding utility lines. Um, the narrative and the locates are included in your packet, and I, I do want to confirm that the city's first draft of the FY22 budget does not include any um, provision for a pro an NPDES project. So any recommendation that the committee makes would um, trigger us, would prompt us to include that component in the next draft to present for, for, to full council for consideration. So I think that, that part of the discussion that, that we wanna have today is what project does the city believe um, is most um, uh, needed or desired uh, as part of the, um, you know, to, to start pursuing these funds um, and also consider where the matching funds that the city needs to provide to meet the 100% cost share, a uh, 50% cost share that the city would be required to, to, to contribute, where does that come from, basically? Um, we have franchise, franchise, franchise fees available that the city could allocate towards this project. Uh, they're currently um, included in our general fund revenues. So we can we can maybe talk about that later after we decide what kind of project the committee would like to pursue. Okay, uh, I'd like to throw something out there before we get too deep into this. And the first one being, as we discussed earlier, we got so much stuff going on at the marina right now, whereas that would probably be aesthetically the front runner as number one candidate, but I don't know with everything going on down there with all the construction, you know, all the changes, if that maybe we, maybe we should not consider that one uh, as a top one. Uh, I'd like to hear from the committee members. What, what are your thoughts on not only that, but what projects would you like to see? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I agree with, I, I think, uh, you know, the 41st Avenue and the Marina project, certainly I, I, I think would probably be number one priority, but, but then going into the high tourist season, that doesn't look feasible. If I remember uh, at our presentation we had, Mr. Kimball, I believe it was, indicated that easement acquisition is the biggest wild card in any of these projects, and it takes a fairly lengthy amount of time. And so we need to take that into consideration also. So with that being said, uh, you know, I personally would recommend that we look at uh, uh, 
Project 3, 21st Avenue Crossings Conversion, and Project 4, the 14th Avenue Overhead to Underground Conversion, and see if uh, we could maybe work that, uh, you know, discuss that a little bit, see if we're all on the same page or if there's different feelings among the committee members. I agree with you. Just a, if I may, Chair. Yes, sir. Ma'am, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, the just as a reminder, the city owns the city, the Owl Palms Marina. So any any challenges associated with uh, securing easements for for that project would be um, would, would you know wouldn't be complicated because the city would be granting those for our own projects. So um, those considerations are more important. You know, are um, I, I would take it to I would I would um, um, I would think that those concerns would apply to some of the other projects um, that are in the list, but not, not necessarily the IOP Marina. But don't well, you agree, Des Desiree, don't you agree that with everything else going on, what we discussed pre uh, previously, that the Marina could have some logistic problems? Well, yeah, and anything that happens at the Marina has to be very well thought out and, and planned. It is a project that could be done in the off season where there is less um, traffic and could reduce the disruption to the operations. Um, so that's just a planning, a planning component of, of the project, not, not impossible, just like we are with the, doing with the docks now, we're doing that in the, um, hopefully before the summer um, gets here, it's completed before the summer gets here. So we would do something similar if that's, if that's a project that's selected. Got it. Yes, Mr. yes, Chair. sir. Yes, yeah, sir, go uh, ahead. I, I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago, with Brian Berrigan. I was down at the property. We we're looking at a lot of different things. Some of the work he's doing down there anyway, uh, and the improvements been made with the pedestrian path. And uh, we were talking about the overhead lines and the underground conversion at that point, too, you know, looking at that, and, you know, and I told him that we hope to eventually be able to get to that. He was excited about it, as he should be. Uh, that, you know, that being said, with the easements, you know, a, an easement not being necessary for that portion of it, you know, if there's, if there's a way that we could also work that project in and go to council with three, I, I wouldn't have an issue with that either, you know, uh, myself, and say, let's get that part of it done along with these other two projects. And aesthetically, we'd look a lot better down there at the marina because those lines are going to be hanging right over that few fence. And the, and the pedestrian path, pathway, and it they actually had the, the Comcast cable and all that was drooping down, and the marina manager mm -hmm. and his crew were going out there and propping it back up, waiting for Comcast to come out and do some work. So yeah. let's consider that. Yeah. Um, Desiree, your thoughts on that? Excuse me, Susan. Desiree, your thoughts on that? The timing and, and everything, as the things that Rusty was pointing out, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it, he brings really good points. Um, I think that they can be mitigated through planning. Um, I think at the end of the day, we need to look at how much money is available and how to distribute that. Just knowing that we have to cover up, cover 50% of the, uh, of, of the share of any project. So if, you know, obviously these are very rough estimates. We won't know until these are bid out, but they're, you know, they're smart and, and educated guesses from the Dominion Energy team. Um, so it, it's just, we, we just have to decide how much money we have to spend and um, how much money does the city want to allocate for that cost share component. Don't we have about $635,000 in that, in that line item? We have, so we don't have anything in the city's, in the current budget. We don't have anything allocated for that. The fund balance for, for the, um, the non-standard service fee fund balance is, 322,000, that is the portion from Dominion Energy. That has to be matched 50-50 by the city for a total of 637. But that portion of the IOP match is not budgeted anywhere in our budget. So we'd have to incorporate that um, depending on what the cost of the full final project would be. Okay, Susan, you had something to say? Uh, yes, so I, I I agree. I think that those first two projects are good to start out with because they seem doable and smaller scale since we're just kind of getting our feet back into this. Um, I do agree also, though, that uh, with, you know, 
trying to do the marina, maybe not the 41st, the other 41st project, but at least setting the stage for the marina in hopes that if we are able to get things, all the advanced work done, that we could time it so it's done during a slow part of the season. Um, so, you know, maybe to try to set a goal for trying to do all three in the next fiscal year would be, I would support that. Um, I think we, yeah, it's important to remember that we lose the money, um, the Dominion dollars, if we don't use them, in a, but we do have to match them. We will be losing about $60,000 this year at the end of this fiscal year, if it goes unused. I don't know if there's any potential for getting some of the um, initial work and permitting done so that some of those costs could be could be spent uh, during the current fiscal year, Desiree? It would be a non-budgeted expenditure. So there's, I mean, council would have to approve that cost share this year. Mm -hmm. So the carrot for us though would be that Dominion would be picking up half the tab and we would otherwise see those dollars disappearing um, mm -hmm. with, you know, and rolling off the books. So I didn't. It, it would be a rush, though. I don't know if, if that, I guess that's where I would like some input from staff. Like, is it unreasonable to think about trying to get things going before the next fiscal year? I think that that would be, um, uh, I don't think that that would be possible just to okay. get everything, get a project designed, scheduled, bid it out, constructed before, before the end of the fiscal year, which would be June. But okay, could you, then, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Susan. Well, I mean, could you like have some of those early expenses? Would you want to, you would want to keep all the project contained within what one fiscal year? You would, don't that makes it a lot. Yeah, that makes it simpler. It, it allows okay. for proper planning and, and just scheduling those projects out so that it doesn't disrupt um, the summer season. Okay. All right. Well, okay. otherwise, I, I support trying to do um, all three of those projects in the next fiscal year. Okay, so we will take that off uh, of this budget year then. So that's reconciled, right? I don't think she's a budget year. Wait, what? I think what Susan was saying is that she's recommending project one, three and four of the list to recommend a council to include in the, in the draft of the budget for FY22. Yes. Is that correct, Susan? Yes, I believe that's what Rusty was also. If that's yeah, fine with you, Rusty, that's fine yeah, with me. Yeah, I agree with that totally. Okay. okay. All right, that's what we're gonna do then. We're moving okay. on to new business, discussion of fiscal year 22 operating budget for the Public Works Department. Desiree? Okay. Uh, Yes, I'll go ahead and, and touch on some of the highlights for the operating budget for public works. Um, general fund, as you all know, just the op regular operating expenses for the department, continuing operations. Um, not a whole lot of changes. Um, salaries and wages, we're still looking at that number, refining that. Um, this draft of the budget should only include the 2% um, increase for FY21. Um, personnel committee had made a recommendation to reinstate the 2020 FY 2020 2.5 merit increase. That decision has not has not yet been made by council. Um, we're hoping to get some guidance from the full body at the next Ways and Means workshop, um, but that number is not yet sort of in, in, included in that in, in that total. For regular operating expenses, you can see there are some increases and mostly decreases based on actual. Nothing, nothing different, nothing necessarily necessary to, to highlight there, um, unless there's any questions. Um, we did include a new account for every department for IT, software, equipment, and services. So you'll see that there, it, there's no additions to anything. We're just organizing and compiling all of those related expenses in the um, fiscal year. Mm -hmm. 
go through capital projects fund. Um, you can see there that we have the phase two to three drainage expenses forecasted out to FY26 and FY22. We have the expense associated with the phase three drainage. Um, you all know that the city secured a bond of 3.5 for the construction of the three outfall improvement projects. Drainage expense contingency line item. Um, oh, these doesn't these don't have numbers. So uh, the drainage line item under capital projects fund, um, we have increased the provision for drainage contingency from 70,000 to 100,000. Certainly not enough to do everything that needs to be done on the island. And, and Robert and Donnie have been doing a wonderful job at um, addressing some of these um, um, single drainage issues that we um, encounter throughout, throughout the, our community. The FY22 budget includes 192,000 to complete a comprehensive drainage plan. Um, Douglas will be giving us an update of a, a sh in, a, in a short moment about the comprehensive drainage plan. That was an initiative that was included in FY21. Um, and we are hopeful and uh, planning to start that before the end of this fiscal year. So we're budgeting remaining funds um, as this project will um, migrate into FY22. The forecast does include a continued $500,000 inclusion for, for the small but high impact drainage projects. Um, uh, you know, I'm sure that those monies, th that, that plan will change and will be uh, modified as the overall comprehensive drainage project is completed and priorities are set for each year to address different areas on, um, on the island. But we have included a placeholder of 500,000 every year to um, be able to address those recommendations. Let's see, under municipal uh, muni A tax, no changes there, just some reductions based on actual. Hospitality tax, we've included 193,000, um, same, same amount that we have been budgeting for the past two years to address um, landscaping on the island and improvements, particularly at Front Beach. We have been making some improvements to the Front Beach area restrooms. We have some others planned um, to be completed before the season and others planned for the following year. This, I, this line item has been managed by um, our new uh, uh, Robert Isera, Public Works Assistant Director. Those are the highlights that I wanted to share with you. Um, this <coughs> budget doesn't really include a whole budget, a bunch of changes other than uh, continued focus on drainage improvements, drainage initiatives, which it's a huge priority for, for, this, for this island and for city council. So we are uh, meeting that demand and um, have really uh, <coughs> uh, very aggressive projects coming up and we'll certainly continue, continue on that trend. Very good. Questions or comments? I'm good, Mr. Chair. No, I, this seems to fit with our priorities on drainage. And Very that. good. Thank Mr. you, Desiree. Chair, Mr. Chair, yes, I have one comment. Yes, sir. And, and Desiree, I, I missed this the other day, and I missed it again this morning. And this would be globally for all departments. Look at your vehicle fuel and oil. And... Uh, uh, we're up wholesale uh, about 60 cent this last fuel drop that I had. And so that, um, not in necessarily in this draft, but that's something we're going to have to red flag, Desiree. Yeah, thank you, Donnie. Yeah, that's a good point, Miss. All right. Thank you very much. We're uh, <laughs> going to move on to Douglas and discussion of upcoming phase four drainage island wide drainage master plan RFP. Uh, thank you, chairman. So we really just wanted to talk to you all about this as kind of a concept. You know, we, the staff has talked about this internally. The planning commission has talked about it, uh, but the council and this committee hasn't really talked about it. So before we went through the 
um, the work of putting out an RFP and getting responses and kind of grading those responses, we wanted to be sure that we had just um, talked to you about it and, and kind of get a, a sense of whether or not you think it's the right direction. So that's the reason it's on your agenda uh, today. And I will go over it and just at kind of very high level uh, in terms of what we were hoping to achieve. Um, we feel like that once the outfall projects are done and once the um, high impact projects that are underway now are done, we will feel like the island is in a pretty good state from a you know kind of a high level uh, perspective from the wild dunes end all the way to 31st. So that really will leave 30th to Breach Inlet that has really not been studied in a meaningful way um, for a long time. So this, this plan is, is basically twofold. The first is to take a hard look at that area between 30th Avenue and Breach Inlet and develop um, kind of a working list of projects that need to be done to get that section of the island up to speed and functioning as it should. So that's really the big first part of this project and, and probably the majority of this project would be looking at that section. Uh, and then the second part would be to look island-wide going forward, how the city is, main, is maintaining and kind of uh, working within the existing uh, drainage system. So that would look at things like what EDS does, how much we're putting uh, into our contingency an annually, uh, what our codes allow in terms of development, and just seeing if that needs to be modified, tweaked, and, and really giving us a, a long range roadmap for what we should do going forward in, in regards to uh, overall maintenance. So we would, we would hope that once we had this document done, we would have kind of our, um, our construction plans laid out for what we needed to do and have costs for those. We would hope that we would have our long range drainage looked at by a professional and how our sequencing is done and is it frequently enough and is it enough? And then also look at our development standards to be sure that all of our um, kind of different parts of our drainage system are working together and we have uh, the tool to give us forecasts in terms of what we need to put in our budget each year going forward um, and what we need to be looking at in terms of a priority list for projects. A little. There's a little bit of kind of, um, you know, chasing our tail a bit and guessing at what project should be next on the hit list. And we would hope that this, this would give us clarity and really a, a method to order those future projects. We talked a little bit about the, the waterway bike project, you know, and that's a perfect example. We don't really know if that cost and that benefit how that would fit with the rest of the island in, in terms of, of a priority list. We don't know, should that be the top of the list? Should it be in the middle of the list? Should we do other things first? So that's really in a, in a nutshell what the plan is. Um, I can, you know, we can go over any specifics in the, in the document itself that you want, but really just wanted to kind of bounce the concept off of you before we put it out to the uh, public for bids I will also say that um, all of these that we go out for and we get responses and we get proposals for, a beneficial part of that is the experts that are responding will typically say, hey, we see what you wrote here, we see what you've asked for, but in our opinion, you could really do best with this kind of modification. So we think that it'll, it'll probably evolve a little bit as we work through the process, but that's kind of our starting point uh, and wanted to just see if, if you all had, if you felt good about that, or if you wanted to back up and go in a di different direction or, or how you felt. I feel good about it. I think it's, um, it, it'll be good to get the thing complete. Uh, don't you feel the, the focus, um, 
Douglas will probably be from like 14th to 30th since, uh, you know, uh, this end of the island down here is, is probably the highest part of the island, wouldn't you say, in most places? Yes. Yeah, I would say so. There, You know, there are there are some kind of glaring omissions in our drainage system on the breach inlet end. I mean, they're, I would say that they are problematic, but they're smaller in nature. You know, we, yeah. have, a, we have a pocket in Second and Charleston that's really bad. We have a pocket. We have a few pockets. What I, I would right. kind of as pockets versus the rest of the island had had entire you know neighborhoods that were problematic. Right. Other comments from committee members. I do, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir, uh, Rusty. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you that that this is worthwhile, and I think this is good work coming out of Planning Commission and and Douglas to bring this up at this point. And, you know, and, and to get ahead of this a little bit and really see what we need to work with from that area there from 30th to breach would be good. And, uh, you know, let's let's face it, as we go through these, these big drainage projects, you know, we want all of the island looking great, <laughs> you know, not, to, not just half of it or two thirds of that's, it. You know? That's so the goal. It, yeah. It makes mm -hmm. sense that we get all of this other done at some point, too. So what better way to go at it than to to get out ahead, be proactive, and start uh, looking at uh, uh, phase four. Yes, I sir. I would Susan. just add that it's, it has been, you know, the, the next project has always been somewhat obvious on the on the list of where we need to go next. I think from our perspective, we're now getting to a point where the next projects are not necessarily totally obvious. So that really is the, that's really the, the goal there is to is to put that list in some priority that makes sense. Very good. Susan, comments? Um, yeah, I just agree. I think this is probably a great thing to, instead of uh, just going, deciding one after the other, what next, what next, looking at the bigger picture, a lot of these drainage issues are interconnected as well, um, if I'm not mistaken. So, it seems like a smart plan and I appreciate the thought that's already gone into it. Very good. Uh, Douglas, thank you very much for that comprehensive re report and we look forward to, to moving forward on this. Thank you. Uh, there being nothing else on the agenda, the, our next meeting date will be 4.30 Wednesday, April 7th. And um, uh, yes, ma'am. Just to, just to um, set expectations for next steps related to the RFP, we'll be putting that out there um, for several weeks. Um, Douglas and I have talked about continuing the involvement of the Planning Commission, uh, but ultimately that recommendation would, be, would come to this committee to make a, a full recommendation to council before we move forward. So just, just you know, have an expectation that we'll be talking a lot more as we select who um, who the vendor, who the right person or company firm is to um, proceed with this with this project, and, and the other reason why we brought it forward is when we were building the FY twenty one budget, there were a lot of unknowns because of COVID, and our revenues weren't you know we were we our revenues were built on a lot of assumptions. So um, some of these large projects um, we had decided to bring before full council before. Uh, pursuing, even though they were in the budget approved, um, we wanted to ensure that the timing was right. So um, that's why that's why we're bringing it before you all. But we'll be having a lot more conversation in the next few months um, about this. Very good. Okay. If there um, is anything else, and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye.